Hello, welcome back. I thought we'd continue our non-forging videos with something a little bit more applicable to blacksmithing directly with a talk about torches and some of the torches I have and why I have them, what I like them for. Like most of my tooling videos that I've been doing lately, this is not meant to be a how-to video, just an introduction to what I have. There's lots better instruction out there on how to use a torch, how to select torches, and if you have a community college that teaches welding close by, they would be an excellent resource and your skills with a torch will go up tremendously as far as cutting anyways. A lot of them don't teach torch welding anymore. That's getting harder and harder to do. And we may try to do some more specific torch welding videos, although I am far from the best welder with a torch or any other means. But I think torch welding is worth learning for the blacksmith. But anyways, this is most of my torches right here. I have a few other bits and pieces around, but they all look about the same, so there's not much reason to get any further into it. So let's take a look at what we've got here. Most of the torches I use in the shop are made by Victor. It's just what I started with, and I've stuck with that because I've been happy with the Victor torches I've had. And there are, like I say, there's not a specific reason to go with Victor other than I've been happy with them. Harris and Smith make excellent torches as well and Victor even makes some lower end torches but I don't see any reason to do that. A torch, most of these torches are a one-time purchase. If you buy something like this, I, this one actually was used, I got it at an auction, I sent it in for service probably 25 years ago and it hasn't had any work done on it since, so it's, it's probably been in, in use not only the 25 years I've had it, but probably for 15 or 20 years before that. And if I take care of it, it will never need to go in for service again. It's an excellent torch. This is the 100 series torch. They make a 300 series torch, which is much bigger. And if you're doing really big work, you might want to look into that. But I've been extremely happy with this uh, what they refer to as a medium duty torch. I would buy another one of those in a heartbeat and for that matter I have the newer version and only because it happened to come with something else I was buying and it was cheaper to get the whole kit than it was just to buy the parts I wanted so I ended up getting a torch body that I may never use but it's a spare. It's comparable to this even though it doesn't look exactly the same. The big difference is these are the flashback arresters or backflow preventers here to keep gas from going back down the the hoses so you can't accidentally mix oxygen and settle in and blow up your one of your tanks. On this, they're a separate piece, so they're added on right here. But both of them have it, but here the torch didn't come with it new, so it's an add-on piece, and here it's all part of the, the torch. Other than that, they're pretty much the same torch. They take the exact same tips, all the, the heating tips, the welding tips, the cutting head is interchangeable between either one of them and they're both really good torches. I, I would highly recommend them. This little torch I have here, this is also a Victor, it's a, an F-series torch which is what they consider a light duty torch and it also has flashback preventers down here in the in line so it didn't come with one. It's another old torch. I've never done anything to it this is the way it came, and it is an excellent little torch for small work, nice and light. People refer to them as aircraft torches, and if you're doing light duty work, it's pretty nice. The other light duty torch I have is this. It's referred to as a Dillon, although I think there's a new name now. Originally, they were a Henrob, then they went to Dillon. This one actually says Henrob on it, but I think I bought it from the box that said Dillon on it, so it's hard to say. But I think there's another name now. And this is a comfortable torch to, to work with. It uses very little pressure. Everything you do with this torch is four pounds of acetylene, four pounds of oxygen. And it's just torch size and how you adjust the, the knobs that makes a difference. It also has flashback preventers built into it. It's a, it's a good little torch. I would, uh, I use this one quite a bit for small stuff. But I don't know that it's absolutely necessary. It wasn't the end-all, be-all of torches that the, uh, the hype and the sales pitch said it would be. 
I wouldn't turn one down, but I wouldn't go out of my way to buy one. This also has a cutting head. And when you're cutting, this little button on the torch right here is what controls the oxygen feed. That's, that's off right now because I don't have the cutting head on, and the cutting head fits in here. But it's different than other cutting heads. It's an inline cut. If you try to move sideways, you lose your preheat flame. So you have to always move in line. But as a result, it can be very precise. Their claim is it cuts like a plasma cutter. I'm not that good with it, but I haven't practiced with it. But I think you could probably do that if you really want, wanted to. But I, I don't cut with a torch very much anyways. But this comes in a kit. It has the um, attachment for cutting. It has more tips for it. It has special tip cleaners. Then it's a, a nice little kit. But again, it's... If I had it all to do over again, and it could only have one of this one or this one, I'd buy this one. I think it, it performs better. It probably uses a hair more gas, but I think it's just a, a more comfortable torch in my hands. This big monster here is a cutting only. You can add a cutting head to a, a regular torch, and that's what most people do, and it works just fine. But at one point, I was doing a lot of heavy cutting. I was cutting plate for workbenches and stands and other shop fixtures, and I really wanted a better cutting torch. And this is really a nice cutting torch. It adjusts with just the, the two, two knobs. You don't have the third knob. It's a very comfortable lever, and it balances very well, and it's very easy to make a nice, long, straight cut with it. And I really like this torch. It's a, uh, not going to have a name on it, is it? Uh, it's a Victor, but I don't see the, I don't see the model number stamped on it. That's odd. Oh, there it is. This is an ST900FC. If that tells you anything. So that's basically the torches. Like I say, they have different heads. This is a, People refer to it as a rosebud or a heating head, which is what uh, Victor calls it, a heating tip. And they come in different sizes. The, the larger the number, this one's a number eight. I'm not sure what's on there right now, but the larger the number, the bigger the, the heat. And these things use a lot of gas, but for doing things like upset square corners like we did on our shelf brackets, Sometimes this is way better than using forge heat. It's much more controllable. These are welding tips, and they can be used for small heats. I use them for things like setting rivets, and I have them from a double odd up to a six or a seven. I, don't, I think I have everything they make. It looks like, uh, actually they go up to a 12. I bet I don't have them that big. This says a 12 will weld four inch plate. I've never tried to weld 4-inch plate. As far as cutting tips, the cutting tips are very similar between this torch and this torch. This is just a bigger tip. So this little one fits that. And this bigger tip fits the bigger torch. So you have to buy, buy tips and accessories that fit the torch body that you have. And to know what you need, this red card I was just looking for, if you're using a Sutherland, Victor has this red card, and I suspect that Smith and Harris both have similar products available, similar guides, and it will tell you. It, it says if you want to cut three-quarter inch plate, you need a tip size number one, and you need oxygen set at 30 to 35 pounds, and a Sutherland set at three to five pounds. And this really is the Bible for what you're going to use with torches on the back. This has the MFA heating nozzles, which are the acetylene nozzles, and it tells you all the gas sizes, gas flows, both oxygen and acetylene for that, and it has all the welding tips. If you're just welding eighth inch plate, you can go use a number two or number three tip, and it tells you how much oxygen, three to five pounds, how much acetylene, three to five pounds. For welding, it's often very similar ranges. But that's really most of the information you need for these. The blue card is propane, but unfortunately it doesn't give you welding tip 
pressures for propane because people don't tend to to weld with propane so you get cutting tips and it's very efficient to to work with propane for cutting and it has the uh, some machine cutting tips which are irrelevant but they do make this is a propane nozzle for a, a heating nozzle but it's a different this is an MFN instead of MFA the N is natural gas and natural gas and propane are about the same and they have a, a propylene card which I don't I've never used propylene I don't think I ever will but I've got that little card there just just in case and these are really good resources if you're using a torch there's no reason to turn the gas up too high you're just wasting fuel if you do that and this stuff is not cheap all the other information you might ever need cut rates how to set up welds how to assemble your torch how to clean it how to treat your oxygen and acetylene, acetylene cylinders Everything else is in this book if you can find it. There's a PDF version at the Victor site, which is now actually, uh, I think Radnor owns Victor now, so you have to go to the Radnor site to, to find the Victor stuff. But uh, if you can find, find the book, I like the hard copy books, so I can keep it in the shop, but you could print out the PDF file, and it has all the same information. These tips are propane tips for the 100 series torch and for the F series torch and they take replaceable tips. It's a, it's a universal body and you have to change the tip and these are expensive. It, to get one universal body and one tip is over $100 whereas these last time I bought them were probably $25 or $30 a piece. So the propane stuff is not cheap. They're very proud of it, but they also know that you're going to quit buying a settling from them if you go to propane. Somebody asked me once, how do I shut my torch off so fast in the videos? Because they can hear it. They just set it aside and they can hear it pop. Well, that's this thing. This is an economizer valve or a fuel saver valve or a gas saver valve. Everybody calls it something different depending on whose version of it you buy. And there are lots of different versions out there. I have hoses coming in with the oxygen and the acetylene from the tanks and then hoses coming out and the valve shuts the gas flow off so the torch goes off. Even if it doesn't go off, it's hung safely out of the way where you're not going to burn anything as long as you think about where it points before you light anything. And I'll show you how that works. also has a pilot light here. This little set of bottles is what I have that F-series torch on, the little aircraft torch and I can get a lot of use out of these little bottles but I don't use them anymore this is when I used to take a torch when I was working at the fire station I could get away with doing some little tiny projects in the evenings at the fire station and so I could take this torch with me and have that to use there for setting some small rivets and things like that but this is a really expensive way to go because it costs a lot of money just to swap bottles off and when you're hardly getting any oxygen or acetylene you're really losing money in the long run by not using bigger bottles. But if you need something portable, something like that works. This torch, on the other hand, I use all the time. This is just a plain old trigger-operated propane torch. A map gas torch, you can get them either way. And I use that for lighting my forge, both the coal forge and the gas forge. And that is just really handy because my hand doesn't have to get real close to the forge to shoot that flame in the door of the gas forge. And I really like using it for that purpose. I use it to light the wood stove. I use it to light my little space heater. I almost never use it for normal torch uses. This is just my big automatic match. And I really like them for that. Problem is they wear out. The piezo lighters on these give up way sooner than I think they ought to and then they're just about useless. You can still light them with a spark lighter, but that's not the reason I like it. If I wanted that, I'd buy one that just needed a spark lighter. So over here on this end of the shop is where I have my gas cylinders. I keep all the spares out of the shop where they're not a risk. You want to keep oxygen and settling, things like that in the shop at an absolute minimum because if they leak, you're filling your shop with explosive gases and it's a really ugly thing. So I just keep the two cylinders I'm working in, and this is actually small. My other oxygen cylinder is bigger. I'm not sure how I managed to get two different sizes, but that's what I've got. 
And I've got a little splitter here. I used to run a, an acetylene only torch, like a plumber's torch, but it really didn't turn out to be all that practical. When you light it, when you're turning a torch on, opening the valves, like I say, this isn't really a how to video, but there is a risk that you can blow out a gauge or regulator when you're opening the bottle. So either come in from the top or your arms out of the way or come in from the bottom in this case I can do that and make sure those gauges aren't pointing at your face. Oxygen bottles are always turned on all the way. Acetylene bottles on the other hand only turned out about on about a quarter to a half turn so that if you have a problem it's very fast to turn off. This one has to seat the cylinder and the valve are designed to seat all the way open. This one is not, so you can do that. It's part of the, the safety features of the bottle. You'll also notice over here that I have a gas line. This is my propane line, comes in from the 500 gallon tank in the yard. Uh, this goes over to my forge. In this fitting here, I will at some point hook up a regulator for a oxypropane system. That's why I've just bought some propane tips. If you were watching the first part of the video, you'll notice those tips look like they've hardly been used, and that's because I just don't have this system all set up yet. But I'll be able to hook up to propane, and propane is way cheaper than acetylene, and it is better for a lot of the heating and cutting purposes, because it's a more even heat, it's not quite as intense. I don't know if I'll be able to weld with it. I've heard some people do, and I've heard other people say it's not possible. So I'm going to try that on my own, and we will find out. So let's go light that economizer valve, and we'll show you how that works. Now also over here, you might see this, this ratty old red card. But that's that same red card I have. That the one I showed you is a fresh copy, but I keep one over here by the torch so I can always check my pressures. Now the economizer valve has a little pilot light here and this one is an acetylene pilot. When I change over to propane I'll have to change this and it's adjustable but I would only adjust it barehanded right after you light it. That, this little adjuster heats up considerably over time so you're going to need to do that with a little pair of tongs or put gloves on or something because you'll really burn your fingertips if you grab that anytime after the first couple of minutes. But I've already set the torch. Like I say, we're not talking about how to set torch pressures and how to use the torch specifically. We're just talking about the equipment. And that's all it takes to light it. You hang it up on the valve. It stars it out, goes out. This valve could use a little bit of an adjustment because it doesn't shut off both gas flows exactly at the same time, but it's pretty close. And that's just all there is to it. That's really handy if you're trying to heat things and then need to have both hands available to set a rivet or do the bend, you can put that out. Now I have seen, I don't have one, I haven't built one, and I, I may one of these days, but I have seen a setup like this that caps this pilot light and replaces it with a pilot light out here and puts the whole torch on a foot treadle so that the torch comes up when you take the flame off it comes up and it just hangs there and it's still on an arm like this so to shut it off or, or maybe down here but in any case you don't have to hold on to the torch you just step on the foot pedal it brings the torch across the pilot light turns on the gas you can hold a bar in front of it heat it up, take your foot off the treadle, the torch goes out and you can do your work. And that's really handy for some people. I'm not sure if I'd use one a lot or not, but they're, they're kind of an intriguing setup. Some people call them a dragon torch. I don't know if you'd find that searching for it or not, but they're kind of a handy thing. So we'll shut our regulators off. And then I'm going to open the screws you, it's not a good idea to leave pressure on the diaphragms. A lot of people do, it's just your regulators won't last so long. And then bleed it off at the torch, and then turn the torch valves off. So that the valve is off, the regulator is off because there's no pressure on the diaphragm, and the torch is off, that's three valves.
that any leaky gas has to get by before it can get into your shop. So that's the safest way to take care of that. You can take all the pressure off the the torch, the pilot light on the gas saver goes out and I hang this up here because I don't want to leave pressure on this valve if I don't have to. And that's really all there is to this. Now you'll notice I've got hoses coming in, hoses going out and that's 25 feet of hose going into this and 25 feet of hose going out to go to the torch. And sometimes it's nice to be able to move this to the other end of the shop but these hoses are a real nuisance where I use it 99 percent of the time which is over by the vise. So most of the time I'm using the torch at the vise here and the cylinders are really quite close so this, in most of this 25 feet of hose is always in my way so I have to coil this up, uh, hang it around the tank necks, the hook on the wall would be better don't hang it from your gauges or the stem of the regulator. That would be just asking for trouble. It's a lot easier to do two-handed than it is one-handed. So this gets to be a bit of a nuisance in my mind to have to try and put all this away all the time. And like I say, I almost never take the torch to the far end of the shop. but it pretty much lives right there and then I gotta coil up the other 25 feet of hose and get it out of the way. I have a better idea. It's not cheap but I think I'm gonna like it better. And that is this nice Cox hose reel. It has 50 feet of hose on it. I can mount that to the wall above the tanks and it's retractable. It has a spring lock this is a higher quality brand than a lot of the ones you're going to find, but I believe it's going to perform much better in the fact that it will hold when I want it to hold and retract when I want it to retract, which a lot of cheap hose reels don't do. So I spent extra money. This is about a $450 hose reel, uh, money I almost wish I had back now since I'm not as productive in the shop. But in the long run, I think I'll be glad to have it. The problem with that is that my economizer valve is no longer portable. It's going to have to just live in one place because I'll, I'll run from the tanks or the regulators to the economizer valve with a short hose and then from the economizer valve to the hose reel so it'll be 50 feet of hose after the valve. So if I need the, the torch at the welding bench or if I'm going to go out in front of the shop which that's plenty of hose for me to do I'll just have to turn the pilot light off on the economizer valve and use this just like a, a regular torch that doesn't have this valve. But I'll still be able to set this valve up somewhere over in here and I haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to do that but I've seen other people that have the valve permanently mounted to the wall of the shop in such a way that the torch is not going to point towards the wall of the shop because that would be bad. So I think that's going to be a better solution. We'll find out when I get that up. We'll talk about it again. But it's going to be probably January or February. So that's just a quick look at my uh, torch options, what I use in the shop. I don't use all of these all the time. This new torch has never been used. But one of these days I'll probably use it for something. I very rarely use the hen rob anymore. But the the regular 100 series torch with a medium sized welding tip or a smaller rosebud I use all the time and they are very useful and I strongly encourage you to have a torch in your shop if you have room for it. Stay safe with it though. Acetylene is very unstable so follow all the rules and I strongly encourage you to take a class from some place that will teach good safety practices and good technique for using a, t a torch. Although a lot of what we do as blacksmiths is radically different than what they'll teach you but that provides a good foundation for you to be able to work with. And we'll probably incorporate the torch more in our projects after this. I really do use it quite often. There are a lot of things I really like a torch for. But I try not to use tools that 
all the time that we haven't addressed yet in the videos. So now that we've addressed it, we'll probably use it a little bit more. Get the little cards. Track down the book if you can. Both of those are good resources. As far as the hand injury goes, uh, some of you have asked uh, how things are going. It's certainly on the mend. It hadn't quite been two weeks. I saw a hand surgeon the end of last week. He did a little very minor surgery just to clean it up and bring all the damaged tissue together so it will heal more neatly and not have a, the giant scar that it might have had had he not done that. It would have healed anyways, but it would have taken a little longer, would have been uglier. But he said about three weeks, so that's still two and a half weeks from today. So we're looking at just before Christmas, before I'm back in the shop working, I think. No promises. So we'll continue to do little short videos like this, and I'll try to, try to find enough of those to keep us busy for the next two or three weeks. When we get back, my plan originally was to do a series on various bell-like things that blacksmiths can make. But that was more Christmas oriented and I think the time for making Christmas gifts will be passed when I get back in the shop. So in the meantime, if you're interested in something like this, there's some other people doing videos on these pre-cut bell blanks that you can buy off the internet. These came from Stony Creek Forge. Uh, John Stewart, I think, is his name. I believe Roy over at Christ Centered Ironworks was going to do a series on some of his pre-cut blanks that he gets from Stony Creek Forge. So you might want to run over there and see how he turns this into a bell because I'm not going to get time to do it this year. But for next Christmas, we'll get back to that stuff, I hope. So that's about it for today. I appreciate it if you like the video. Love it if you hit the subscribe button. Share the videos with your friends. Go watch some of the other videos. I promise we will be blacksmithing again before long. Take care.